All right, welcome to the Hanoi Virtual Classroom. I am your moderator. This evening we have Brian Munn and Whitney Boswell talking about the grade book. Here they are. So, Brian and Whitney, take it away. Thank you, Joel. Um, so, today's going to be pretty low key. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of things that I've planned. Um, but I already saw some chat about what you want to get out of it, so anything I can do to help and we can kind of come up together with some ideas about how to use the Grade Center more effectively and efficiently. Um, but it's going to be really based on you guys. What do you want and what can I show you? What can I help you with? What do you want to know? Um, and as you watch this, maybe you'll come up with some ideas, so feel free to share them. And feel free to turn on your microphone and just ask questions whenever. I am totally open to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, do a short overview of box. So inline grading is basically what you do when you take a Word document and or the student's actual paper and you're writing on the paper, you're giving them feedback directly on what they gave you. So in Blackboard, we used to have Crocodoc grader and that allowed you to write basically on the document but online. Um, and that has been replaced in Blackboard with Box. Um, and so it's, it's done a little different way. So I was going to show you how to use that first um, since it's a new tool. So to do that, you're going to be in your Grade Center. And then you'll click on the um, attempt of the student. And this is only available when a student submits an assignment, so not in discussion board or any other type of activity. Um, so when you click on the attempt, You'll notice a big blue box of words right here, and that means that Box is supplying you this uh, preview of the document. So there's a couple of documents that um, will show you a preview, but won't allow you to actually comment on it. So I believe that's Excel doesn't do it, um, and a couple other more um, non-common types of documents. So if you see it here, but you don't see a comment box right here, then you know it doesn't do comments. Um, but there's two things. You can either do a comment box by itself, and I've heard that this is very helpful when grading math assignments, is you click on the box, in the little comment image, and then you go to wherever you want to comment, and you just click. And that drops a little comment box, and you can give your feedback. So I've heard from the math faculty that they like this on homework because they can go through, the students will actually write out their problems and then scan in their, or take a picture of their homework and put it here. And so the instructor can go in and click on their handwritten notes and give them feedback on each uh, problem. And so students really like it as well. The other thing you can do is highlight and comment. So if it's a little more, you want to be a little bit more specific about things, you could say, highlight this specific word and then you can see a highlight and a little comment so you can just co just highlight if you wanted it doesn't really give students all that much information to go on um, or you can hit the comment and comment as well so if you're just highlighting you can automatically just click on the the comment icon and it will do both the comment and the highlighting at the same time so you don't have to do both so Choose better word and then post. So there is how you do that. Why is it not going away? Okay. Um, and then if you find that you didn't like the comment you left, you can go back and just hover over it and hit the little trash icon and definitely delete it and it goes away. Same thing with highlights. You click on the highlight to go away and click on that. And if you're highlighted and comment and you delete it, it will delete both. So uh, the one thing that to be aware of with the comments you leave here for students is that uh, the students cannot 
download this with your annotations. So they're going to need to make note of them separately. Um, so while I'm here, I will also show you how to, so say you're downloading, there's another way to give inline feedback and that's through Word. And you can actually download the document. Maybe. And open it. And you're going to edit it. And down in review, there is a way to track changes and add comments. So you can track your changes and show them. You can leave comments. And then once you're done, you want to save it as whatever's helpful, and I would probably put like instructor feedback. And then going back to the Grade Center, you click in the Feedback to Learner box, and that's over the top of that, it's not gonna work. And then here's where you would put that file. And to do that, you can either just hit this little attach icon right here and go find, browse your computer and find it. Or you can click on the A and that will open a whole text box so you can add actually a bunch of different things here. But the attach icon is here as well. So I'm going to find it. I'm going to go to wherever I, there we go. And then you see it's uploaded and submit. And then submit, so you see it here, and I didn't grade it, okay. I'm going to use the rubric to grade it. Oh wow, this is a very large rubric. Okay, and then submit. So now you see we have a grade, and the student will be able to see that inline rubric, or the inline grading uh, feedback. So any questions with box or word and uploading? Oh, that is a great question. So we had someone in the in the room that's asking or telling me to show you how to do, um, which will actually help with the question of how can I be more efficient when I'm grading. So um, if you want to, and so especially if you have more than four or five students, like I have, if you have thirty students and you want to do the inline feedback in Word, an easy way to grab all of those is to go to the assignment, click on the drop-down menu next to it, and then click on... Assignment file download. There we go. So right here, assignment file download. And that will actually download all of the assignments that have been submitted in a zip file. Or you can choose who you want. And in this case, these are the only two students that provided one, so I would download those. And when I click on that, I want to save it. And it's going to be a zip file. So I want to go out a little and extract all, extract, and then these are the files. So I can um, double click on it and provide feedback. So then I have all the documents and then when I am grading, I can just grade and upload, grade and upload. So I can go through all the documents first and then go back in and load them all up. Any other questions about inline feedback? Is that helpful? Okay, okay. so I'm going to move on. And someone mentioned about how to be more efficient with the gradebook. So um, one of the things that some uh, faculty do to help with that is you mentioned that something about um, how um, how when you're grading and you're reading through everything, how to manage um, taking a long time to do each one. And then um, how do you kind of grade evenly across students?
because I know when you're grading and you start grading, you might grade harder if you're like me, or you might grade softer if you're like Brian. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. And then um, by the time you get to the end, you've changed a little bit, so you want to be more consistent. So one of the ways the instructors do that is they hide the column from the students while they're grading. So if you go to this column and you click there, you can actually hide from students. So when I do that, they cannot see the grade, they can't see feedback at all, at all. Um, so then I can go through and I can just start grading. I'll just grade, 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 grade. And then when I'm done, I can go back and I can say, okay, mm, I was grading this way, I need to be more consistent. You can go back, you can change it, submit it. And then once you're ready, you're good, you think it's all great, then all you do is you set, hit hide from students again, and then it comes off. And then everyone can see it. So it also helps with students being able to see their feedback all at the same time. So if you're grading over a period of days, it might be nice for everybody to get their feedback at the same time. So that's another reason why you might do it. So you'll, notice, you'll know if it's hidden from students if there is a red dash right next to the name. Hopefully that's a little helpful. Um, and another way to make it easier to put grades into final grades in uh, SharePoint or PeopleSoft in the Grade Center or in the, what is it called? Faculty Center. Faculty Center, thank you. Um, is to use the CityU scale that's in Blackboard now. So if you've been here for a long time, this is new. Um, it's, we set it up probably maybe two years ago. Um, but what you can do is you can edit, so for, for example, this is the grade and it's the percentage for the student, so they can see. But then I have the city use scale set up, so they can see what their final grade on the city use scale, you know, 4.0 scale is going to be. Um, and then when I'm ready to put in final grades, all I have to do is look at this one column and transfer them over to the faculty center instead of calculating. Yeah, so uh, there was, if you didn't hear the question, um, prior to now, there was an issue where if you had the city use scale as the secondary view, no, as, as, the, as the primary view, students were seeing one version and then you were seeing another that was very minute but different and yes that has been fixed so now the students see the actual one so um, Karen would like to know does the city scale update automatically yes uh, so there was a question does the city scale update automatically and that is yes And then Leanna is also wondering, does that column automatically set up, or do they need to set it up? Uh, you will need to set it up unless it's already set up in your master shells. Or if you are the master shell owner, you probably don't have it set up. Um, so to do that, um, so there's two ways. You can either make a new column, total column, for just the CU scale so students can see it. Or you can just make the whatever total or weighted total you have have it as a secondary so just you can see it. So it depends on what you want to do. Um, but the, if you want to do just the one that's already there, you're going to edit that total column. And down below the context editor, there are, is a primary display and a secondary display. So there's a bunch of options here for you to show students what their grade is like. And so here, I would keep the percentage as the primary display because it's the main grade. And then the secondary display I would show as the CU scale or CU scale. Then when I go here, we have the percentage which students can see and then the CU scale, which only I as an instructor can see. So that's one way to do it. And then the other way would be to create a whole new total column. And you want to be careful with this depending on how your grade grades are um, calculated in your particular course because if you have a, a weighted total you're going to want to duplicate that weighted total completely 100% or else you know one small thing is going to change it and then if you just have a total points column that's a little easier because you're just um, creating a calculated column a uh, total total column and it, this is just on grades so you would say 
see you scale and submit. If it had a name, <coughs> second. And then if you're doing a weighted column, you would have to choose weighted column specifically. And then change it to CU scale. And then you would have to recreate this based on what's in your actual weighted total. So taking these over and weighting them as you need to. Adding just weighted total column into it. So you don't have to replicate the whole thing, you can just add the weighted column. Okay. Oh, to the general one? Yeah, if weighted column is included in the grid plan, you can, instead of replicating, you can just make it that it's calculated based. You have to, it has to be calculated column, and you can ah. just make it that it's done by based on that. Okay, so I'm getting new information. That instead of recreating your weighted total, you can just go ahead and create a total column, like I did here in the second scale. And then at the very bottom, there's select columns. So you can choose which ones you want to be in the total. So you want to select specific columns, and then you want to go find the weighted total, which I do not have at this point. But if I did, it would be the grade one. There we go, the grade one and then submit. So it would be taking just that weighted total column and transferring it into the city of scale. Thank you. Yeah, that is very true. Prevents errors. Great. Great option. So um, other questions or ideas? What do you want to see? What things do you get tripped up on? I'm trying to think of any other ways I can make it more efficient for you to grade. Um, I don't know if you know about Grade Center um, Smart Views, but you can go to underneath the Grade Center, there's actually a needs grading. So you can go to just what needs grading. Um, and then you can also make smart views. So assignments, especially if you have many um, students in a class um, some or lots of different types of assignments. Sometimes it's nice to have all of your discussion boards in one grade center and then all of your uh, assignments in another. Question? Um, what about using audio for grading? Ah, great point. Using audio for grading. So you can do that. Uh, do you want to talk us about how you've done it? Have you not done it? Or have you done it? Hi everybody, this is Joel. I'm one of the faculty here, um, also acting as moderator. But uh, I've used audio grading in doing a either a screencast uh, and recording a paper that's been graded with my comments and then attaching it as a file just like the Word document or wanting to see if there are any ways to do inline audio grading that synthesizes both box. So let's say I can just read my document and then record an audio with attaching a comment on it at the same time. So is the question if you can't do that? I don't know, so I'm, oh, okay. so I'm asking. So Okay, I've been talking and you haven't been hearing me. Um, so yes, you can use Box, use the, um, the rubrics and give feedback and include it in that general feedback to the learner, um, video and audio. So to do that, you have to download the iOS I, iPad app and it's only on the iPad and it's called in, Instructor Grading or Gradebook Blackboard um, and it actually allows you in the feedback to learner area right here on the iPad it has an option for audio and an option for video and it automatically embeds it here for the student so yeah it's an option for those who like it, um, or have an iPad hopefully in the future it will be available for everyone 
Any other burning questions you have? Any more pointed questions about how to maybe make it more efficient when you're grading? It would be worth reviewing how to uh, rearrange the columns or rename them. Oh, sure. Yeah, so if you don't know, um, you can actually realign uh, all of these columns in the Grade Center. And let me go to the main, the full Grade Center. Um, so you can actually uh, rearrange them however you like. So if you go to Manage and Column Organization, you can actually drag and drop all of the um, columns to where you want. And actually, this is a great point. Thank you, Brian, for bringing this up. Um, once you're done grading something, you can hide it from yourself. So students still see it so they can see their feedback, but you can hide it from yourself so that you don't see it. So when you go into the Grade Center, you're not scrolling a bunch over to the side to get to more assignments. You can just hide it. So to do that, you're going to click on the, uh, you're going to go here, manage uh, column organization, and then you're going to click on the column you don't want to see, and then just show hide, you want to hide it. And then you're not bothered with all of those col columns you've already done. Um, but then to change them up, um, you can change and drag, you know, once you get your shell, you can drag it to be however you want. So if you have a certain uh, pace that you grade things at, or if you like all discussion boards and first and then assignments, or you like it to be uh, sequential for when they're submitting it, you can just drag and drop and change it to be in the order that you want it to be. Do you want to show them how to rename the column? Sure. Um, the other thing you can do here is you see these first two columns are frozen. So these are columns that are going to stay no matter what when you're scrolling left to right. So if I add the username here, and hit submit. I'm going to take up more bandwidth that's frozen um, rather than having more room to scroll. So if you want more room to scroll and grade, you can unfreeze some of these, although you're probably going to want at least a first name or a last name so you know who you're grading. Um, the other thing you can do is if you have more than 15 or 20 students, you can actually edit rows displayed and have uh, 50 students here. So instead of scrolling up and down, you can just have all of them. If you have more than 50, God bless you, sorry. Um, <laughs> but then you can just have them all on one page. Um, the other thing you can do, the last thing I'll show you, is you can rename the grade uh, column names. So if you have a really, really long assignment name, um, you can hover over it and see the name right above, I can't point to you, um, right above, right there, so you can see the full name. But if that's annoying to you, you can actually change the name to something shorter. So if you edit the column information, and then right underneath the item name, which is the assignment name, you can name it whatever you want. So port, you know, short for portfolio assignment. And then in here, it makes this super simple and easy to get to. So. If you have any questions, feel free to chat them in the chat, um, and then stick around if you want to stay with the for the panel that everyone's going to talk about, whatever you would like to talk. So, thank you. All right, thank you, Whitney and Brian. This concludes session number three. We are all very grateful for your presentation. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, at the panel discussion. So for those participants, please look at the chat box for the survey link, and we will see you in about five minutes.